After watching this video tutorial, you will know how to model interior scene in Blender from just a photo reference and a 3D camera. This add-on-free camera matching workflow is crucial for professional Blender work and I've been doing this successfully for my client projects for over a decade. If you have any questions or comments on my techniques, feel free to leave them under the video so we can all learn from each other. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which is available for free on my channel. You can find a complete playlist with other parts, link in the video description. And if you want to access all of the project files and support what I do, I share more on that at the end of the video. In any case, my name is Lech and welcome to my interior visualization course in Blender. By the end of the previous video, we managed to create pretty accurate, in my opinion, camera match for this scene. And to test that out, I would suggest, for example, taking this workbench, let's call it a workbench, work surface here. Let's select one of its faces and let's just move it till the end so we see what's the actual dimension. And in the upper left corner, you can see we have perfect three meters so if you ask me as for the camera and perspective created dimension this is uh, quite quite accurate let's see the width and it's again 90 let's say five centimeters pretty accurate uh, the height is probably quite the same it's 90 something so it obviously doesn't match by millimeter uh, to uh, let's say a technical drawing but again as I explained before our approach is a little bit more like if you have an experience with architectural drawing where you have to match a perspective looking at the object looking at the the space in front of you it's very often similar to what we were doing with the camera matching so you try finding the right perspective by creating well many multiple lines by erasing them and looking for the right proportions so you can see here for example we still have a slight mismatch in this area we could probably maybe fake it later uh, just by editing the geometry perhaps if you remember we also had a little drawing mismatch in that area so perhaps it's called by it is caused by that uh, we will see it later, but to further check the accuracy of our camera match, I would suggest adding those kitchen elements here, perhaps a carpet outline here, something that resembles a table here, and see if the dimensions of the newly created object are pretty much related to the real world scale. So let's begin with this huge kitchen uh, cabinet element we have here. I will start by slightly increasing the area on the right and as with many many things in our project I will just add a cube and this will be my starting point. I'm gonna move it to this area here and what's really important at this point is knowing uh, the bottom point of our geometry so you might have noticed that with the counter element I've created that we have its bottom part aligned to the actual floor it's maybe not super uh, aligned or snapped to it but we just need to know that these points here are related instead of having something like this and when we go to the wireframe mode it turns out the actual face the actual bottom part of this object is way below than we think so let's just align it a little bit like that now let's go to the top view shrink it here it can be it can be uh, put slightly into the wall it doesn't matter that much let's now switch to the wireframe view and as I move my face here, the edge we have here, we right now, since we align it, know that it's more or less at the level of the floor. So since this edge would have to be here, 
we just need to select the entire face and move it like that in the camera perspective so you can see the per like the, the lines are basically matching like if if it was created by a software or something now to move this uh, how far we should move this air uh, on this face here you can see this little edge shows us the distance so let's snap it till here perhaps we could move it to this edge here but it's one or two centimeter difference so it shouldn't be a problem now we can move this up when I switch to the solid view, you can see we are going past the ceiling. So let's let's just keep it as with the floor on the ceiling line. Um, yeah, and now let's go with this face and align it to the edge here. Okay, so I will now create two edge loops, one here, so it matches the surface of the of this work area here and the other one like this so it's more or less so you could see now why is it important in my opinion to have a very simple but straight and uncomplicated geometry otherwise we won't won't be able to create those very clean cuts and edge loops and as you can see, if I select those two faces and simply extrude them, the newly created geometry follows what we have in the picture. So how far should I move those? Perhaps, perhaps somewhere around here. We will see later how it looks. We have a little bit height difference, but it should be okay for now. Uh, to quickly check the proportions, if I zoom in, you could see we have those uh, shelf mm, boundaries, lines. So I would suggest adding a few more loop cuts in this area only. And we will be able to see here in the actual perspective if the proportions of those shelves are natural. We, we don't really know the, the dimensions from, from this camera angle. That could be everything. So, But what, what we can clearly determined right now is well if this uh, oven space here is too narrow or it's too big or if this fridge becomes surprisingly large so to quickly check that i will add another loop cut here and match it more or less to this area i will now add one more and match it to this edge of a fridge so if I select those two faces now, let's go to the side view. We can see it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 110 centimeters. Well, that's that sounds pretty accurate for me as for the big fridge in this beautiful apartment. Um, so I guess we have a very nice camera match. Let's add a few more edge loops and one should be here so you can even see if when I add it it really goes uh, perfectly it's it's actually perfectly aligned in the almost in the middle um, yeah so let's just add a few more of these like here and this one separating the ovens from uh, this wooden element here. Yeah, I was I would say that's that's it for now. Let's maybe leave the bottom uh, areas untouched for now. Mm, what I mean by bottom areas are these. I mean this area here and this upper one here which already has a one loop cut generated by the the fridge but let's leave it like this and it would be pretty interesting to see how this element looks from another camera perspective so we will add an extra camera a second camera view 
and see how it relates to the match we already have here. Adding a second camera will be now much quicker and that's because we already created the first one and we have a general understanding of our interior scene and that's another reason in my opinion why you should actually practice a manual camera matching because if you would do it automatically you i mean this is okay that would be a pretty easy camera perspective to match uh, but still if you would add multiple other cameras to match other pictures um, doing it automatically might be actually slower over the project because you wouldn't have a general idea of the camera lens used in that interior, the shift values and so on. So I will just zero the shift values for now and change the background image. So let's select this kitchen view. And as you can see, here we have this uh, fit and stretch option visible. So the resolution of an image, the proportions of the image are different to my camera proportions. By default, that would be the look. And you can see this uh, tabletop is hugely stretched. And if you just omitted that because the stretch is the default setting, you might already start working on the scene and the results would be well awful um so yeah we need to f need to fit the, the image to our camera and now let's see how we can proceed from that point you might have noticed with the first camera that i was barely changing its height uh, but i think that's something we have to adjust in that case and why do i think that the reason is if you take our uh like this kitchen element from here you can see the perspective we have on this tabletop is much mm, i mean this this perspective is much wider so we would either have to rotate the camera which is not advisable for interior scenes or just move it upwards so you can see now the perspective increases um yeah so let's do this and see what happens by the way you cannot see the obvious the, the tabletop is in fact a bit longer i think um but yeah let's let's just keep working and see where we can go from here i would say this area here is more or less accurate maybe um let me just play around with the camera for a moment and I'm gonna get back to you in a second. So after a few more minutes of moving the camera around, I think the result is pretty, pretty nice. As you can see, we have a quite accurate camera match. There were some elements we had to adjust, like this wooden part here uh, that looked a little bit narrower from this camera. But hey, we are doing it all by hand, so it will there will always be some kind of imperfections but yeah as i mentioned in the previous chapter we're working on projects like this a lot of things especially when it's a design that's not built yet a lot of details like this are later revised by your client by, by the architect telling you to fix this element because maybe on the sketch let's say you were delivered with a perspective sketch like this and that element well it actually looks as it looks in this camera view 
but once you add a real 3d model to this sketch it turns out it might be much wider so these are the the, the changes you have to be prepared for and let's be honest because we have such a nice geometry because it's so simple it's so easy to add loop cuts those fixes are not no no problem at all um yeah so you also see i've extended the main counter element a little bit to the left because we have that visible in this camera perspective and the main counter here in the center it's actually a bit longer than we thought from this camera again so in the next video i'm gonna focus a little bit on adjusting this geometry because from this perspective we can see there is a little edge here happening um, that it's also carved inside in this area so since we already have a camera matched for that view it will be pretty pretty easy to recreate that shape and then we will switch back to this camera to see how it actually works uh, from this perspective if we have to adjust anything around that area and if we can start adding some extra elements like this main black window here so thanks for paying attention and let's see how this counter element can be shaped thank you guys for watching in the next video we will continue using the second camera to fine-tune the details and size of the kitchen island and after that we will move to adding more details such as windows uh, wooden panels around the staircase and so on if you want to support what I do and access all of the project files I've created so far and for the entire course, plus the complete Blender interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, you can do that by visiting Chocofur store and learning more about our subscription plans. These truly are the best money can get you if you're considering getting better at Blender. Guys, thank you for watching this video and I see you in another one. Bye bye.